everybody, what is going on? It is Dunbar Snack Bar with MLB 13, the show. And here we go with some more 30 wins with 30 teams. This time we're going to be playing as the Chicago White Sox as we continue our trek through the American League Central. We're going to be facing the visiting Kansas City Royals. Now, this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love 30 wins with 30 teams is because I really cannot think of a time, recently at least, that I have played as the Chicago White Sox. And I don't mean that with any disrespect or anything like that. Believe me, I don't. Um, just haven't had the opportunity to. So this is going to be kind of fun, getting a chance to you know, play as a team for the first time in a very, very long time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the game started off right here in the bottom of the first. 1-1 one, one count. And with this pitch, we're going to go ahead and take that one into right field. Just a one hopper. But I'm going to get on base. So a single for me, and you guys who have watched me know that any time my leadoff man gets on first, I'm automatically looking to see if I can steal the next base. So there I go, breaking for second. A great pitch right down the heart of the plate, but not a great throw over to second. So I will be safe. Another one of those times where I will gladly take a strike to get that extra base. All right. So now that we've got a man in scoring position, Man with some speed, too, means I really could com come home on any ball that's hit well. So here's Adam Dunn at the plate, lefty versus lefty. The first pitch of Adam Dunn's at bat is going to go into right field as well. Just a slow roller. I'm going to be rounding third, coming home. I'm taking a chance. The throw is off, and I am safe. Now that works for a couple reasons. One, I could tell that the outfield was playing deep, so... A little roller like that in between first and second. Well, outfielder had to charge in on that one, which gave me some extra time. And I think it really did help that that throw was off. If it would have been right on target, I still think I would have been able to get home just by getting underneath the tag. But it's not what happened. So we've got a one to nothing score now. Runners on first and second. 0-2 count right now. And this one going right on the ground, up the middle. 6-4-3 double play. Royals are going to get out of that inning thanks to that double play. Chris Sale is going to be on the bump for me in this one. Top of the second, 0-1 count with one out. And that one's going to be a base hit for the Royals. This is going to be the first one of uh, the game for them. So with Chris Sale, of course, I'm always confident here that I'm going to be having a good game. I always seem to have uh, problems whenever I face Chris Sale. It's the first time I've been able to pitch as him. But I'm going to try to see if I can get the ball on the ground to force just this. Your typical 4-6-3 double play. So we go ahead and answer back with a double play of our own to get out of that inning. Still one to nothing here, bottom of the second. A good hit. Now the frustrating thing about the hits that I've been having so far in this game is it seems like every single one is going towards an outfielder. I think the only exception to that has really been Adam Dunn's hit. Um... But yeah, it just seems to be like bounces once and it's right in the hands of the outfielder. So I'm not too happy about that. Anyway, another one that goes on the ground. Another double play. I hope we're not going back and forth with this. Oh, that would not be cool. All right. It will make for a quick game, that's for sure. All right. So now that uh, we've got an opportunity here to be able to talk about the Chicago White Sox, this is really what makes 30 wins with 30 teams for me. You can trace the origin of the Chicago White Sox back to 1894. They became the White Stockings in 1900, so right at the beginning of the 20th century. They became the White Sox, though. Um, well, they've carried the name from 1901 to the present. But you've got a lot of history with them, too. Three World Series uh, championships. You've got 1906, 1917, so it's kind of interesting, World War I. And then 2005, so there's a pretty, there was a pretty big gap in between the last time they had won the World Series. And that's something that I always like seeing a team overcome is just that big gap. But they've won the AL pennant six times, going back from 1901 to 2005. But a big hit for the Royals right here that's going to bounce off the wall. It's going to turn into a double. And so now they're really threatening here with a potential run of their own. So... Chris Sale got out of it earlier. Let's see if we can get out of it again. Two outs, though. This one just right back to Sale. We'll throw over to first. 
No problem. So a little comebacker that works out to my advantage here. Well, here we are, bottom of the fourth. Canerco at the plate. Ooh, not able to get that one. Going into center field. Again, another base hit for the White Sox here. Really have been no shortage of base hits in this one for us. But uh, not like we've had a ton of them either. Only been able to produce the one run here. Let's see if we can get more. So waiting to see what we can do. Now with Chen, there's a lot of breaking balls. Ah, dang it, not again. Double play after double play in this one. Like I said, this could uh, this game could go pretty quickly if we keep doing something like that. Not able to get a hold of that one, so that's gonna end up being a base hit for the Royals. Double play here, who knows? All right, Salvador Perez coming up to the plate. So let's talk a little bit about some of the players who have uh, played over the White Sox or played with the White Sox over the years. So I know that, uh, well, I mean, you've got like Harold Baines, uh, Ted Lyons, Frank Thomas, Big Hurt. Of course, he was just inducted into the Hall of Fame. Like Big Hurt, I remember watching him play. Carlton Fisk as well. Carlton Fisk, man, talk about a good catcher. <sighs> Carlton Fisk and Johnny Bench are some of my favorite catchers. Like, they were the ones who I wanted to emulate more than anybody else. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here as well. Shoeless Joe Jackson. So I know that name can stir some controversy, of course, but I'm going to credit him as one of the best White Sox players to step onto the field. But... All right, another base hit here for the Royals. So that'll put runners on first and second, and this is starting to kind of worry me here about the outcome of this inning and the opportunity for the White Sox to be giving up some runs here. Well, not like that's an opportunity, but you guys know what I mean. Opportunity for the Royals to get some runs. There we go. All right, so I got to get back. Sell, ah, yes. Sell was not heading over to first, so... That little slide ended up working, and I get out of that inning. All right, let's keep this going. We've got to get the offense really to be able to produce some runs here because I'm never comfortable with a one-run lead over any team, for that matter. All right. So not looking to steal or anything like that, which does worry me with as many double plays that we've seen in this game. That would have been another double play had it been a few feet on over to the left. But runners on first and second now for the White Sox. So we're getting it going, stringing together a few singles. I just need to get one big hit. Something into the gap, maybe even something over the wall for me to feel comfortable about how this is going. Ooh, here we go. Is this going to be enough? Nope, at the wall. And I'll be safe at third as I go ahead and tag up. So that was a little risky here, seeing that I didn't have the best speed going from second to third. But I figured with the depth of that hit, of course I could go ahead and give it a shot. So runners on first and third now. So laying down the bunt, going with a little squeeze play here. And I get the run. I really didn't have too much confidence in me getting out of that without hitting into another double play. So, as I mentioned, um, with Shoeless Joe Jackson, I do figure him to be one of the best players to play for the White Sox. Uh, I didn't want to go into the whole Black Sox scandal because I don't think that's necessarily fair because usually with 30 wins with 30 teams, I talk about the positive things. But honestly, when you study who Shoeless Joe Jackson was, um, you know, some of the disadvantages that he had, the fact that he really excelled at baseball. I find that to be a really, really cool story. So, I don't know. I kind of wanted to explain myself a little bit about that, too. You know, um, just with somebody who didn't have that great of an education, uh, didn't know how to read or write, playing baseball and being ridiculously good at it, too. Yeah, that's the type of stuff that I love about baseball more than anything else. So, all right. Still one or two to nothing here, my bad. I forgot we had that little squeeze play here. But 
Looking for an opportunity to get the throw out at first. I've never understood why the computer does that. Why they just stand on the bag. Why don't they just go ahead and run through it here? As long as you stay in foul territory, you're fine. All right. Got to be careful. Dang it. Another base hit. Nope. I made the catch. That one was close. So Coleman's now coming in relief for Chen here late in the game. I think this is really just a matter of Chen having given up quite a few hits here towards the late of the game, or towards the uh, later part of the game. And was starting to get a little tired too. Confidence was really waning. So man on first, Adam Dunn, who had the first RBI of the game up to the plate, able to wait on that one. Tremendous catch over there in right field. Seriously, so many of my hits have been going right for the outfielders. Oh, well. we still got the lead right now. Top of seven. First pitch here of the inning. And it will be another base hit. See how many, like, small singles we've gotten? Still not able to make it over there either. Thank you. I think uh, only one big hit, and that was that one by the Royals. Here we go, another double play. I think that's been the, the tradition of this game here. This matchup is to switch back and forth between who's hitting into double plays. It works well for all the pitchers involved. But uh, anyway, Royals still getting it done. Fighting through all of this. <laughs> that was a great throw. <laughs> That one always cracks me up, where it's just like a little lazy floater, like 10, 15 feet away. And it goes about 10, 15 feet in the air. All right, let's see if we can get out of this now. Dang it. It's got to be one of the better hits here today. This one going into the gap, rolling to the wall, so I'll pick it up. Going to be an RBI double for the Royals, and this is making me wonder whether or not I should be keeping sailing at this point, or if I... Need to be going to the bullpen. I do have a few pitchers warming up right now. But there we go, a little tag too. All right, so I do go to the bullpen. I'm bringing in Addison Reed here to try and finish this game off. See if we can close it out. Reed gets the save. I get the win. Everybody for the White Sox is happy. So we'll start this one off low and inside. A little base hit. Stepping on first. We're good. One out here in the bottom of the, or in the top of the ninth. Look to see if we can get another ground ball. Addison Reed able to do that one, just a comebacker, easy throw over to first. Two down now. One out away from the win. The Royals going with a pinch hitter here. So, of course, as with all things in baseball, this could go either way. A lot of times, I'm not too excited about going with the pinch hitter myself. You don't see me go with that too often. I usually have a lot of confidence in those who are at the plate. But this one, shallow fly ball. It's going to be caught. Game is done and over with. The Chicago White Sox end up winning this one here by a score of 2-1. to one. So a close game. Thanks for watching, you guys. I sure do appreciate it. More 30 wins with 30 teams to come later on, so make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that great jazz, but you guys are phenomenal people. You really are. Thank you again for watching, and as always, I hope you guys have a good one.